All right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, today, of course, we wanted to talk about command, which we hope that you're all utilizing and uh, basically trying to figure out the best ways to see what we're utilizing it for, the best ways that you can um, use it for your business to really ramp up your, um, your production. So we do have an expert panel. We do have Anthony Rollins. Say hi. Hello, guys. Jeremy. You don't get a last name. And Luis. <laughs> and myself, I'm Nick Shepard. Uh, so to start off, uh, first off, if, if you guys have any questions, please put it in the chat box and we will try and get to them that way. Um, uh, if you are just logging on, please mute yourself and then we will get to the questions, okay? Okay, guys, so while those questions are coming in on the chat box, I'm going to launch a poll and I'd just like to get an idea from everyone uh, on this call where your level is of command knowledge and competence in answering the question here, just so we know who our audience is. All right. So um, to get things started off, um, you know, really, again, I, I wanted to just get an idea of where we, well, hold on, sorry about that. Um, all right, I wanted to touch base with our panel here, see exactly what they're doing in their business through command that's really helping them out, really boosting their production. So uh, to get started, uh, we'll start with Anthony. What is the one thing in command that you utilize that has made the biggest impact in your business? And feel free to share your screen and kind of show us what you're, what you're doing and what you're talking about. Okay, well, thanks, Nick. Um, that's a great question. So, you know, when command was coming out and we knew it was heading our way, it was something that I just said to myself and I made the commitment, I'm not gonna get left behind on the command train, right? If I'm gonna be with this company, this is where all the, the bet has been placed is in the technology with, uh, behind a billion dollar investment. And that commitment, was basically understanding and knowing what command was and then being committed to an ongoing learning process so I could really maximize its use in my business. Um, just since we've been in shelter in place, Dan May and I have uh, committed an hour and a half uh, twice a week to where we're just working on different elements of our business. And we have spent several hours in actually working on various aspects of command and have progressed quite thoroughly in not only our understanding and yet also our implementation of command. So um, a couple of things that have been working well for me is opportunities. Um, recently, I just decided to take what I had been using in the form of an Excel spreadsheet to kind of track my potential deals and how much I would be making and uh, I put all that information into command and based on the series of questions that you have to answer or stages that you have to put where those potential deals are, command will then calculate the probability of those deals actually showing up as far as income is concerned. So I'm going to switch to my screen here and uh, see if I can't get you guys on here to take a look at this. Uh, okay. Okay. So here is opportunities. Um, and if we go to all opportunities. Is anyone else seeing it? Yep. Oh, now I see it. Yeah. I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. So we have opportunities here. Um, let me see how to get to my, I want to get to the screen where it shows. Okay, here we go. So your opportunities is broken down by your listings, your buyers, and then your leases. So if we just kind of go under the listings here, uh, we're going to be able to see that I've got listings in different stages, right? You can have listing leads that you're currently cultivating. 
right? Listing that are in the appointment stage. And then these are listings that are active. So this was the listing I just talked about. Um, and then here was someone who I was talking to over the last couple of weeks. I just happened to see the MLS today that, uh, that, that she listed with someone else. So I can remove her as an opportunity and just get her out of there. And then And then what it does is that it will update to where, and I'm trying to get to where my income shows up. So here you see like my potential income from my active listing, from my two that are in appointment stage, the potential income is 51,400. The probable is 17,000 here. And, and I want to go to these two here just to kind of give you an idea of, of what this looks like when you're filling this out. So when you go to edit or you go to create a, an opportunity within command, uh, you're going to pull up by the contact and then it's going to have, it's going to say buyer or seller. And then you're going to be able to answer these questions like opportunity phase. Where are you in the opportunity phase? Are you still cultivating? Are you at the appointment stage or is this an active listing? And then for stage, you're gonna be able to put, are you, is this a, for the appointment, is this a scheduling appointment that's been kept? Is the appointment scheduled? Or again, has it been kept? So depending on how you answer these questions, um, as to where you are, right? I'm in the appointment stage. Have I, do I need to schedule that appointment? Has the scheduled appointment been kept? Or am I still in the process of somewhere in between there? And then based on the answers to the opportunity phase and the stage, and then your time frame of an estimated closing date, command will then calculate the probability of that deal to close. And, and I found that to be real interesting and helpful in being able to uh, being able to see down here, right? So down here, it looks like I've got one active listing, two in this appointment stage, and then my buyers, I've got eight buyers that are in various stages of being a buyer, right? I've got one that's in the showing, one in negotiations, one, two, three, four, five, six that are currently searching right now. I've got a no, another four that I need to schedule appointments with that I've been nurturing and I'm in communication with. I have a scheduled appointment for one and then this is one that I've kept an appointment with and we're just continuing the dialogue. So again, by having all of the different buyers in the different stages or all of your leads in the different stages, you're really able to see, okay, I've got three listings, 22 buyers, which is a total of 25. My potential income is 430 GCI and the probable income is 143. Now, every time each one of these opportunities changes a status, either by an appointment kept or a buyer broker agreement signed or a listing with an accepted offer that goes to negotiations, then these amounts down here will change because you're getting closer to more of a certainty of income and less of a probability of income. So if I've had specific GCI goals, then I can not only look and see where, my, where I am potentially for the year, I can more so go back to the gap between the potential and the probable and identify how I need to nudge that lead to the next stage, right? Do I need to set that appointment with them? Do I need to follow up with them? Do I need to have a conversation regarding a price reduction so we can get closer from being active to being under contract and in negotiations.
Absolutely. That's that's some really powerful powerful stuff there. Knowing your numbers is absolutely key. Uh, if you don't know your numbers, you're just kind of spinning your wheels, right? Uh, it's good to have things written down in front of you. You know who you need to contact. You know where your pipeline's going to lead. And by the way, guys, when uh, Anthony's talking about uh, it, it, it gives you an idea of where you are, it uh, command's going to base everything on your performance. So it's going to track your closing, your, your appointments, your appointment to listings, uh, your buyers to closings. So it's going to give you an accurate number based on your performance and not, you know, uh, Joe or Betty agent uh, in another office or your office. So would it be helpful if we just went in and, and like started an opportunity? Would you guys care to see what that looks like? Yes. Okay. That would be good because I was having, yeah, I couldn't actually get it started. Okay. So all the time. we're just going to create an opportunity. Um, okay. Market Center, Santa Monica. This is going to be a buying opportunity. Um, let's see. I'm going to make my mother. A buyer. Keep in mind that your uh, the opportunity, the contact does have to be in your contacts before you can do anything. Yes. Very important. So the contact needs to be added into command and then from opportunities you can access that content. So um, if there is a co-buyer, like I've got a, a, a engaged couple right now that are actively searching, then the co-buyer information would go here. So the opportunity name is Gene Rollins buyer and custom tags. Let's see, um, I can make her a Facebook lead ad and okay, let's see, past client. Okay, we'll just make her nurture lead because that one shows up there. So I can tag her again based on the tags that I have for my contacts and then an estimated closing date. So. So, so my mom and I are talking, she wants to buy a home now and she wants to be in that home. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her down as a July 1st closing date. And that time frame is basically now, like she's looking now. Her budget is 800,000. And then the commission rate, which you have options are, um, We'll put two and a half. The, cult of the opportunity phase here, right? We're, am I nurturing her as a lead? Am I setting an appointment or have we signed that buyer broker agreement? Yes, I'd make my own mother sign one. And are we starting to look for properties? So she has signed the BBA and now she is actively looking for properties, right? Opportunity phase, active, opportunity stage, searching. And those so, options can go from searching to showing to negotiations to legacy, which I believe means closed. So from there, I'm going to create that opportunity. And now here she shows as a singular opportunity within command. I've got custom tags, I'm the owner, she's active, she's searching, that's her name. Estimated close date, budget, commission rate, potential commission. Now so we're gonna go in, I'm just gonna oh. go in here and I'm gonna make an edit as if we just happened to find a property today and we got an accepted offer. So we're gonna go from active and we're gonna go to negotiations. And just by having made that difference, which I should have shown you beforehand what that looks like, um, my potential GCI would now have, my probable GCI would have changed by having gone from searching to being under contract and under negotiations. Because the system saying, if you're under contract and now you're negotiating, you're closer to getting that income than you are if you're just searching. So remember, when you, got, when you guys are entering in the commission amount, this is that one side of the transaction commission because a listing opportunity is completely separate from your buy side opportunity. So you wanna make sure that if you're 
if if you're doing a listing you're only you're only entering the commission rate in which you're receiving if it's a buy side it's only the commission rate in which you anticipate you're going to receive obviously we don't know because that's property by property but we typically estimate that it's a two and a half percent for the buy side so just remember that when you're entering that information in because that does go into the calculation of your gci hmm. And then also one of the things we should have started the uh, the meeting with, uh, and I noticed because Anthony's not doing it, is um, please, please, please always use uh, incognito on Chrome. Um, as Anthony can probably attest and the rest of the guys, Nick and Jeremy, some days it'll be fine if you're just using regular Chrome, but there'll be other days where you'll be like, what the heck is wrong? You'll, you'll spend four or five hours trying to get a hold of tech support. Do not use anything other than incognito or you will run into problems. Okay. And, uh, and just to interrupt uh, for a second, um, it's Dylan on the call. Um, I know that some of you um, in, this, uh, in this group have uh, agents who are just starting out, uh, mentees. Um, tell them to come to my class. I go over all of this stuff, um, specifically the command and comp uh, the compliance and command aspect. Um, it's typically every Tuesday or Friday. Um, so just, just to let you guys know the, um, to tell your mentees that. So that when, Thanks, they get here, that when they get here, they, they don't have to uh, run. You don't have to run through this with them again. Thank you, Dylan. Perfect. Luis, you said incognito Chrome. What is that? That's just uh, incognito window on Chrome. Uh, Anthony, since you have the screen, can you show them how to do that? Uh, I did not know that. That we you open an incognito okay, so, window. So you wow. open a tab in Google Chrome, and then you go to these new three dots to your window. team, yeah. and then you can open a new tab, a new window, or a new incognito window. Yeah, eighty percent of the times when when uh, command is glitchy, all you have to do is go to incognito, which is the reason I say that you should always just work in incognito. Uh, I mean, Jeremy and I have been dealing with this for, you know, eight months. And, you know, like I said, it's it's funny how in incognito, it basically runs almost perfect. And what, if that, you use what does that mean? So incognito mode is um, essentially Google Chrome put in a developer aspect of, of their software, which removes a bunch of plugins and things that start up in their software that um, get in the way of command working properly. Um, it, it's, it's not the best way of operating a software, but it is the way that KW developed this. Therefore, it's, it's best practice just to operate with that. Got it, thank but you. An, but an incognito window is one that doesn't track in your- That's correct. That's, a, that's another one of it is it stops, it stops a lot of the cookies from running, a lot of the, um, the coding in the background. I thought it was just programs. for secret stuff. No, no. And one of the other things that it does, Brownie, <laughs> is that when KW pushes out uh, new patches or new fixes or new things, in incognito, you don't need to clear the cache. So that's one of the reasons they uh, recommend uh, that that you do that. That is so, <laughs> I'm so happy I learned that. <laughs> Jeremy, Nick, and I have only preached it like eight times in meetings. So it's funny how people forget. Or well, how they weren't there. <laughs> All right, guys, let's oh, move on to the next uh, next one. So, Jeremy, um, same question for you. What is the one thing in command that you utilize that has made the biggest impact in your business? Um, so I have contacts in 50 million different places, um, not just um, – not just for my real estate business, but for my IT business as well, which has gotten me a decent number of referrals lately. Um, but I would say contacts, which is just the basics of getting everything into one place. But the other part of it would be um, designs. So I kind of have two. Um, being that I operate more than one business, um, designs has allowed me to utilize it for more than just real estate. Um, with the drag and drop features that Designs has, um, it's it's super easy. I do consulting for a property management company. I don't do their marketing, but I've been but I've given them the templates that are easily modified, 
And so if you have your own rental properties, if you have, you know, things like that, or even businesses that are just slightly outside of the realm of real estate, it's easy to take some of those simple designs, download them into, um, you know, Photoshop or whatever and drag and drop and do what you want to do with them. Um, but I've been really focusing over the last couple of weeks on getting all of my contacts in. Um, all of them are still in spreadsheets at the moment because I'm <coughs> in the database before I import, um, which is the wisest thing that I can ever suggest. But like we've told you guys before, um, using the Scott LeMay or Scott Leroy marketing suite that our, um, our market center has access to, to get your database from wherever it is to command is the best way to go about doing it because um, as someone who started off on command when it first released, I imported my database wrong. Um, and that was before the bulk delete and archive function was available. So I had to go through and delete them all one by one. Um, That's always fun. But it's, you know, it's getting super easy. I went in and created all of my tags in command and then made sure that my, my contacts were tagged um, in, the, in the spreadsheet. So that's a little higher level than what I think a lot of you are going to deal with. But if you have your contacts somewhere else, um, some of mine were in constant contact. Some of mine were in um, my address book on my Mac. Going in, getting the stuff into a CSV file. If you can't do it yourself, get Scott Leroy Marketing to help you. They'll jump in via GoToMeeting or TeamViewer, whichever one they use. Excuse me. And um, get you through that because having all of your contacts in one place is one of the staples to using this software is, you know, everything, you know, as, as Anthony showed you, the opportunity is based off where your contact is. If it's not in there, you can't utilize it. Um, you know, a lot of the design and marketing functions, you can market directly to those people, but if you don't have them in there or you don't have their emails and you don't have their social media fields filled in, um, you can't target market. Um, you know, they've, we, they've gotten a lot of the marketing suite up and running with, uh, campaign emails and smart plans and things of that nature. So if you don't go through and fill in birth dates or emails or, or all that stuff, it's not really going to do a whole lot for you. So it's a lot of admin and housekeeping work, but it's the basis of your real estate business is putting your database where it needs to go. Therefore it's, it's worth putting in the time to it. Questions. Absolutely. So you are able to now um, do download successfully a CSV file into command. Let's say because I use Top Producer. Once I clean it up, all of it, then I can just go through the Leroy the guy. Mm -hmm. It's not Leroy. Okay. They'll do it for you. Yes. They'll do it. Okay. I, I would one hundred percent have them do it for you. Yeah. Um, you can download the Excel. You can download the CSV out of um, out of Top Producer, uh -huh. um, clean up what you want to clean up, and then just talk to them because there are fields that have to be merged specifically for that software's export to get okay. it into command. And doing that is a beast. It's not an Honestly, easy Jeremy transition. too. Hey, sorry, yeah. Nick. Um, I would even let uh, Scott Leroy do that because if Jeremy mentioned, like you could do something mess miss something and then that file is basically worthless. Um, but Scott Leroy will actually kind of know and have the correct way to download it so that they can go ahead and upload it. So, you know, again, like Jeremy mentioned, I would let them handle it. Just give them your, your password to talk to sir, and then let them import for you. It's, 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 I mean, that's what they get paid for. So you don't want to deal with that. And they get paid by our office. You don't have to pay them. Right. Right. Nice. Okay. And just to confirm, I'm I'm drinking root beer. It's not beer. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh, sure. We know. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. So, so for everyone and on the call, you know what Jeremy stated was really important. And if you are at that beginning stage of still getting contacts into command, once you get them in there, then you need to you know schedule in a, on a daily basis. Like I'm going to go through ten my contacts, right? And now's the time you can reach out to ten of them get their updated information. If you have a bad exactly. email address or you don't have a cell phone number or you're confirming their home address, which is really important because once you have the home address, you can then put them on 
the monthly or the biweekly neighborhood nurture. And, and, and with all the extra time that I know everyone on this call has, this is the time in which you want to attack those things in your business that have been neglected because we've all been too busy. And, and database should be first and foremost. And, and if you were on today's bold pivot call, you know they talked about database as well, so. Quick question. I have been updating, I mean, uploading one, two, like that. So once, let's say, I clean up the database, then I send it to Scott Leroy, and he updates those that I, I sent to him. If they're duplicates, then will they show up as duplicates in command? I've heard that before. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. They're Not working yet. on that function. There is no fun uh, merge uh, option just yet, but they are working on that. But so let's, uh, let's, let's keep the questions to the chat box for now. Um, I do want to continue moving forward. I had forward. a problem at the beginning. I, I managed to get Okay. Uh, well, you're frozen. So um, <laughs> let's move forward, right? So all your questions, let's keep it in the chat box, right? So in the meantime, um, touching on what Jeremy said real quick, um, just about, um, you know, getting your, your contacts. I'm a big organization and systems guy. So um, one of the things that I did, and I'll show you a quick, uh, a quick little sheet of what I did as far as getting your contacts in order. I know it can be a little tricky. And when you're creating new contacts, you want to make sure that you get it organized and systematized so you can, uh, so you can work it. So let me share my screen real quick with you. Yes. How? Oh. And this will give you just an idea of what I've done. So you only have a certain amount of colors in uh, KW Command, right? So I created for the white is all of our partners and vendors. The red is going to be the source where they come from. Was it a Facebook lead? Was it family, FISBO, whatever. Um, this gold or brown, whatever it is, um, that's going to be the events. Our campaign options is going to be in the yellow for me. Again, this is how I set it up. You can do it. Feel free to do it whatever way you want. This is just what, what works for me. Um, this one for the status, are they a buyer? Are they a current buyer? Are they a past buyer, seller, tenant, whatever the case may be, right? City, I mean, this could be infinite number of cities, but obviously I focus on 90025. So that's primarily my focus there. Uh, other, are they agents? Uh, did I go to college with them? Were they in my fraternity? Was it from high school? AWALC, right? So all these different options. This is just one way to organize things just a little bit better. Um, so it's, you're not just throwing in new custom tags and, you know, not really sure where to go with it or how. What's going on? Ida, right, are you going to do it? Come on, let me show you. Oh. Guys, please mute yourself. Nick, can you Sorry. send that to me? I'm sure it's actually, happy. it's already on um, KW Connect as well as the KW Facebook page, but I will put it up there. I'll put it up uh, on the Facebook page on KW to connect again. Thank you. He's, he's gone to a step that I haven't I haven't hit yet, which is color coding my tags. Um, but the, you know this is this is one thing that you just need to conceptualize how you want to group your tags together. So Miriam, you being in in top producer, it's the same mindset of you know you're going to go through and say that these are all your potential lead sources. Those are, you know, those are all tags. So you want to make sure that those kinds of things are are in your contacts when you're when you're getting ready to put them into command, because then you don't have to do it one by one. All right. And if you haven't been utilizing command that much, uh, then now is a good time to get everything in order first. That way, you don't have to go back and then re-tag everyone once you finally figure out the way to organ organize it. So it's a good good idea to set it up now as if you're not utilizing it as much as you should. All right. Uh, so now we'll go to Luis. Okay. So Luis, uh, same question. question. Quick question on yours, Nick, please. With regards to your color coding and all of those names are tagged within command in your command? 
Yes, they are. Each and every, all of them, the million of them. I'm teasing you. Yes. Every, every contact has a tag. And those are tags. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, and then to, to follow up that question with, with my stuff, uh, Miriam, tags are a very important part of command. Um, that's how you can kind of, you know, basically pull up all your, your buyers, pull up all your sellers, pull up uh -huh. your past clients, pull up your potential, potential leads, uh, potential buyers, potential sellers. So um, I actually like what Nick did and I kind of followed a little bit, although I didn't kind of follow the coding for what he was doing, but you know, coding is very important. So you might want to, when you get started, keep some sort of um, continuity with what you're tagging as far as, you know, your red tags or your white tags or your yellow tags and so on and so forth. And the so tags do show up. Ah, you can see you. here, every single one of my contacts, they will have a tag. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. So you're, I see you're missing a couple emails. Working yeah. on that, Jeremy. <laughs> that's why he's that's, only at that, one. that was one of the that was one of the steps that i've been taking is not only do i need to make sure that all my contacts are in one place i need to make sure that they're complete and up to date so after you know after i initially went through and gave my entire database the oh my god you know how are you doing during this you know crazy time call it was hey i know we spoke a couple weeks ago but i just wanted to make sure that i have the best email address for you you know, it was, it was that kind of follow-up because I knew that at some point I was going to get, you know, I and they were going to get tired of the, hey, I'm just checking in on you calls. So it gave me something to do as well as a reason to make sure that I was staying in touch with them. Yeah, and I believe I haven't, because uh, I, I still actually need to update birthdays and whatnot, Jeremy, but I believe if you update the birthdays or even just the, the day that they bought their house, it will... Uh, remind you it would give you a notification um, in your saying couch. hey yeah. so so and so's birthday is coming up or hey so and you know joe and janie's uh, anniversary is coming up for when they bought their house so you can reach out and make it a touch um as far as what i'm doing um i've been working with command for jesus over like a almost a year and a half now so i literally got to to use it when it wasn't working so it's funny to hear people complain about oh well it's not doing this and i heard that it doesn't do this uh, unless you've tried it and you know for a fact that you're having a problem with trying to do something, um, I would say, you know, kind of like what Anthony mentioned on the on the bold pivot, it's take this time to get on there, play with it, use it, um, and start getting familiar with it. Because what better time to, to do that than now, right? Because you can't go door knocking. Uh, you can't go meet with clients and, you you know, you can't go have coffee with clients. So I think we have a lot of time right now to, to get familiar and start using command to the best of its abilities and uh, i would say in my opinion it's probably 90 percent perfect working that there's stuff that they're going to add they're going to do a, a mojo dialer that's going to be built in that's not on there yet so that's not necessarily a, a, a flaw or something that it, it doesn't work right um for me let me just share this one second Please be patient with Luis. Well, while, while Luis is pulling up his screen, I just wanted to say, you know, in regards to that conversation of, you know, command doesn't do this or I can't do that, you, you have to understand that this is a never ending work in progress. And, and as Tristan Almada stated last week, he's like, you know, guys, like, like there's a to do list of over 100 things that these programmers are working on right now. But when you have 180,000 agents, you got to be real careful about what you roll out because if you roll it out wrong and there's a glitch, then it's going to screw everything up. So if you consider where we are today with command versus where we were four weeks ago versus where we were four months ago, you can see the progress. And this system is, in my opinion, functioning at a level to where you should be on it using it if, if you're not, if you're paying for it anything else, then you should really be moving over towards this platform because it currently does enough for you to run your business effectively through the follow-up, through the text campaigns, through the opportunities, and through the designs. And what they're also going to be rolling out in the next two to three months is really going to be, you know, that much more amazing. Thank you. Exactly. Especially with the fact that you now have to use the opportunity section to get paid. 
Yeah. So, so something they just rolled out within the last week was basically your, your clients who are using the app, they can go to a property and then they can schedule three different available times in which they'd like to see that property. And then they have four different options by which to choose the method in which they'd like to see that property. Is it through a virtual tour? Is it through a Zoom call? Is it through a Google meetup? Or is it an actual live in-person showing? And then those communications can be had within the app as far as how you're going to show and what. And I'm going to guess at some point in time in the future, those conversations that we're responsible for uploading into our file for compliance reasons, we're going to be able to download straight from command and that's going to go into the dot loop and we're going to be done. I thought we were using dot loop. Uh, so dot loop is gone. <laughs> yeah, whichever one we're on now. <laughs> Okay, don't confuse me anymore, Anthony. Come on. Okay. And and right. one of the things, uh, actually, Anthony, that you forgot, I thought you were going to mention it, with the new uh, KW app, your clients can now schedule a video tour with you from the app. So you can actually go and, you know, like say it's a, it's a property where maybe they're in New York and they want you to go to a property for them. You can actually do the video tour from within the app. Wow. So that actually just rolled out. Yeah. Will we be able to use all these different functions of, com you know, within command? Of course. Everything that we're talking about is available to everybody right now. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. I'm not stuck with one. <laughs> you're uh, I'm not you're a robot, so. so. <laughs> the, ro the robots have taken Franny. <laughs> And I'm not sure if it's me. Franny, and, you're, Franny, you're freezing. So go ahead and put that question in the chat. Luis, did you uh, you had something that you wanted to share? Well, I was just going to share my screen, but like I told you, I'm using my phone as a camera, so it's kind of yeah, okay. okay. tricky. Franny, you were frozen. So go ahead, put that question in the chat. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, I wanted to share a little something uh, aside from the custom tags. Another thing that I like to do is um, is actually within opportunities itself. And let me show that screen real quick. Uh, so you'll notice um, within each of either my listings, my buyers, my leases, whatever the case may be. Uh, this one's a fake one, so we'll, we'll work with this. <laughs> so let's say that I got a call from Dummy McDummerson. We move them up and we're gonna be scheduling appointment. Well, the first thing that happens is this checklist automatically comes up. And you'll see all of the things that I set myself up. Now, everyone's gonna be completely different, right? You can make, create your own checklist as you go along the process. So I know that I need to create a new folder, right? Um, I need to pull the property pro profile, create a brag book, run comps, and create a draft listing agreement. And as I go through, I can check them off as I go along, right? So let's say I finished that one, and now I scheduled an appointment with them. Again, automatically, the next steps for these uh, for this checklist just automatically goes in there. So I'm, now I need to meet with the client. I need to send them an estimated valuation, follow up with a phone call, send out the listing agreement via DocuSign. And again, easy enough, you just drag it along and then it goes to the next checklist. And then you can move it along to active. And again, I've got all of these checklists in place. So now that we're actually active and on the market, I've got all of these things that I can, just check along the way as I, as I know I complete them, right? And it's easy enough to do. So in order to actually edit these stages, you just go to this button up here. So let's say if we're on, depending on what page you're on. So if you're on active, it's gonna edit the active stages. If you're on appointment, it's going to edit the appointment stages. So right now we'll click on active. 
up here is the edit stages. And you've got all of the items here. So I've got 14 on staging, eight on showing, 10 on negotiations. So let's say I wanted to add something to, I'm, I'm adding a new uh, checklist item to my negotiations. So these are all the ones that I currently have in place. You just easily click add an item, you save it, and you can move it anywhere in the process just by dragging it. And you can also remove it too. So these are gonna be absolutely key when you're going through the process. If you're like me and you like systems, you like organization, this is an easy way to walk you through step-by-step step what you should be doing every single time in every single transaction, right? Because for the most part, it's not gonna change for you. You have your systems in place. Sometimes you forget things. This is an easy way to remind yourself, oh, this is what I have to do next. Especially during the transaction, you know, in the in the first stages, go through and set the due dates on those. Um, mm -hmm. You know, once once you get an accepted offer for your buyer, you know, go, boom, this is due this date, this is due this date, and then on your home page, it comes up as a task and reminds you every single time you log in that hey, I've got this today, or this needs to be done, so that you're quickly blowing these things back out to your. Um, to your client and you're not forgetting something. Absolutely. And as of right now, I don't know if it's actually happening or not, but um, they were talking about possibly having a generic checklist that'll automatically go in there. I'm not sure how accurate that's gonna be because state by state is gonna be completely different. So um, what I might recommend is just going through the process, um, if you're in a transaction, write down every step that you do and then add it in there. So you only have to write it down once and you'll never forget. And so. then as you, and then as Nick showed you, it's so easily modified that you can go in and tweak it, you know, um, as many times as you need to. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right. That was great, Nick. Thank you. And, and, do you, can you go back to where we can see, I mean, where I can see because I'm visual. You went into listing and then it, the ad stages popped up. Is that what you did? I'm looking at Anthony now on that. So let's say, let's say you were under contract, right? Yeah. If you click on the under contract up top, there is the edit. Oh, I'm, you're not seeing my screen right now. Not yet. No. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, let me go back to it. Okay, so okay. let's say you're on this page, right? This is the opportunities yeah. page. Yeah. If, you was, if you were to click under contract, for example, mm -hmm. at the top right-hand corner is edit stages. Ah, okay. Got and you can, it. yours might show zero out of zero. You just click on that and you can add them from there. And you also created the five stages as well here that I'm seeing, as for inspection, all of that. No, those are that. already in there. Oh, they're in there. Okay, perfect. Okay, got it. Thank you. Very valuable. Those are in there because, uh, as Anthony mentioned earlier, as you drag the contact along, um, the further along the process you go, the higher the probability of income is. So that right. changes your probability and it gets higher the closer you get to closing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, I did notice you only had 90% and not only, but you had 90%. Why was not a hundred? What's missing? Those are, uh, oh. those are the ones, the numbers that they all uh, automatically input. You can change them if you wanted to. The probability okay. number, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. No, no, no. It, the actual, as if you, on the list, it was 90% as opposed to a hundred percent. But it looked like you had the pick, you know, you had everything on there. Right, because it's that's not in the closed stage. So. If it's until it gets to closed, it's not 100%. Ah, got it. Thank you for that. that that, that's what changes the number on your income. So 
you yeah. know, and if you get clear to close, you're you're at ninety percent, but something still could happen, possibly, okay. right? But once you actually move it to close, mm -hmm. that's when you're at a hundred percent. If you're in the nurture stage, you might be at ten percent, right? Because wow. you don't know if they're going to list or if they're going to buy or what they're going to do, so that mm -hmm. probability of income is much lower. Got it. Okay. And don't so, forget, guys, um, I think, you know, Anthony mentioned this and, and Nick kind of touched on it. This is how our office now is going to handle transactions. So at the very least, you should be going in there and um, starting to familiarize yourself or unless you have a TC that's already working on command with, you know, setting up your listings or setting up your buyers. Because otherwise, you know, if you, if you go through a whole escrow, close it and haven't done an opportunity, you're going to be looking at two to three weeks before you get paid. You've not uploaded anything at that point, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And keep in mind, the cla uh, the office is still offering classes for that specifically. So if you, you know, have a new listing or have an accepted offer, go to those classes, take those classes. Even if you don't have anything right now, go to those I'm classes. I'm teaching one tomorrow. There we go. <laughs> Dylan's on point. So go to those classes and at least very bare minimum, figure out how do I get paid? Because without the two. documents, what's that, Dylan? One, one to two tomorrow. All right, one to two tomorrow. Um, so without those documents inside of the transaction, inside of um, in the opportunity, you're not going to get paid. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as Skyslope was before, except right. now everything has to go through command. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, uh, one last quick thing, and then um, I know we're getting ready, or we're coming close to the time here. Um, so I want to ask our panelists, what is one aspect of command you wish you knew more about or utilized more, and what's holding you back? So let's start with Anthony. Uh, it's probably going to be designs because I feel that, you know, between opportunities, between smart plans, uh, neighborhood nurtures, I've kind of got that down. Um, you know, most of everything with command has more so been an element of time or me making a priority to get it done. So that's kind of been what's holding me back. And, and yet, as I mentioned at the beginning of this call, um, I have been scheduling 90 minute blocks twice a week to work on my business with someone in the office. And I have found it to be very, very effective. So if you are at a certain level in command and you know there's someone else in the office, I think it's a great opportunity for you guys to schedule a time, hop on a Zoom call, and then work through it together. It's, it's made a big difference in where I was six weeks ago and where I am with things. Other than that, it would be some of the, the finishing the, the landing pages within command. Um, being able to use landing pages as destination URLs for Facebook ad campaigns, and then getting more people to, to start using the app. So really focusing on a smart plan for my database where I can present the app, follow up, and get them on it, and then uh, be able to track their behavior through command and, and really start to kind of bring them on board as far as moving them along in the process. Awesome. All right, Jeremy, what about you? Um, I will 150 million percent admit that I was the stickler on the, I'm not sending out a single uh, neighborhood nurture or market email from command until I knew that it was working and accurate. Um, so I, I held off on that. And the more and more that I put myself on some of those neighborhood nurture emails, the more and more that I do see that our MLS integrations are starting to come up to par and that the, the numbers on which, um, you know, it shoots out as active and pending and closed sale numbers are, are finally starting to level out and be a lot, lot closer to accurate. Obviously, it's not going to be one for one with what I see in the, in the MLS. And I understand that, but the, the delineations between the MLS and what, um, what command is sending out are, are, are getting a lot better. Um, so, you know, that's where I need to jump back in and start to actually utilize the smart plans and neighborhood nurture stuff and ensure that um, all of my contacts are properly tagged with the correct neighborhoods so that, 
I can start sending them data. Um, and that ties directly in with the app. Um, I've not, I've not been pushing the app. Um, and that was, that was my stubbornness as well. Um, Jeremy stubborn. I don't believe it. I know no one would ever imagine that. Um, but it is, you know, it's something that I need to start finally doing. Um, you know, with, with business kind of having fallen apart for me in the last month, um, I was kind of like, nobody wants to touch this now. Like, and I, you know, the number of people that I've had constantly coming up to me and saying, Hey, I saw this on Zillow. Do you think that there's, you know, in my price range that I've got all cash, am I going to be able to get this or, you know, things of that nature. And it gets really difficult trying to track all of that. Um, you know, with 50 million different text messages coming in with the Zillow link, I could have very easily just had it all going directly into my database under their contact information. And um, that's my own fault. <laughs> so, you know, yes, those, those kind of hit side by side, um, setting it up to ensure that, that there's that what I know that they would be searching for is set up in my side of the database, but also getting them the tool in their hand that would make the search even, even easier. Awesome. Luis? I think, um, you know, kind of along the lines of Jeremy, we, we talked about it and, and I was not 150 million percent, maybe just 75 million percent. Um, I, I didn't want to use any of the mailers, any of the, you know, uh, drip campaigns just because I wanted the system to be working a little bit better, which, you know, as you mentioned, now it is. Actually, if you look at the MLS stuff that it sends out and I've talked to about 20, 25 of my, my spheres, clients that I've uh, sent it to, they love it. Like, they're like, this is awesome. It's, it's better than Zillow. It's better than Redfin. Uh, even with the app, like the app, I've actually, I, I have been pushing it out. And like I said, or even like Jeremy mentioned, week over week over week, it has gotten significantly better. And, and the iteration today is, is a better app than anything else that's out there. Um, it gives you more information. Uh, the branding is great. Now you can do uh, video tours from from within it. Um, I just think you, you need to put down the drunk monkey or stop with the, oh, I don't think it's working yet, which, you know, Jeremy and I did to a certain extent, but it was more of a, a, a calculated, like, I'm going to hold off and send it. And now I think, you know, I actually need to, to start sending to my entire database, which I'm probably going to start doing today. Awesome. It's, uh, you know, for, uh, with nice. that, it, it's, um, I, having, having been in the tech industry for, for as long as I have, I, I'm a stickler for using what I know works. Um, and I think a lot of people in the real estate industry are as well. Um, and I, <coughs> for, for as tech savvy as I can be, I didn't want to use it. Um, because I think Zillow works just fine, but um, it, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm getting over that. Oh, it's another thing that I have to, I have to utilize. It's another thing that I have to explain to my clients why it's better than something else. You know, I, I try not to be the sales pitchy person when it comes to telling people to use something, um, especially when I've not used it. So that was another, that was another hindrance of, of my part is I wasn't doing, I wasn't telling them about it because I physically hadn't been using it myself. So once you, once you start getting into it, it is pretty easy. Um, I've, I've, I've started using it. I mean, and that's the first step. Are yeah. we talking about Kelly or the KW app? No, the new KW app. Okay. Yeah. All right, for the me, uh, the one thing that I haven't really been utilizing as much as I should has been the designs. Um, I know that the option's there, but I always create my own stuff. I've been using Adobe Illustrator. And then I actually have designed a couple social media pieces off of it. And it took like a quarter of the time as it would normally take me in Adobe Illustrator. So yeah. I know it's something that I need to start integrating more into my business. Um, because why not? It's easier. It's there, right? So that's me. Um, I will, I will say this. Um, Tanya asked this earlier, 
um, in the chat and it was specifically about uh, why haven't Facebook ads been working in things lately and I'll just throw it out there. Um, they're not working well at the moment. It's a coding issue on the communication between command and Facebook's inter uh, interface. Um, it is a well-known issue. They're working on it. And I, I being a tech person, um, I hate that answer. I absolutely hate hearing, we know about it and we're working on it because to us, it doesn't seem like they might be working on it. But um, it, it, it definitely, I ran a couple ads and they um, not only did a couple of them come back as that they were uh, disapproved and they weren't gonna get posted. The ones that did, um, a couple of them got me absolutely no results whatsoever, no clicks, no views, no nothing. Um, and then I got one that got one lead and it was absolute garbage. And I contacted Facebook directly and um, asked them what was going on. And specifically one of my, one of my posts had too much, um, too much text in the photo itself, which is something that command doesn't pay attention to. That's the difficult thing is, is when we're going in and modifying all of these designs, and it's, it's one of my annoyances, and it's, it's not to harp on things, but we have to pay attention to the amount of text. Um, so try to put more text in your social media post, not in the actual photo. Um, but also ensuring that apparently they flagged one of them because um, my DRE number was uh, smaller than the smallest text on it, which is something that is a compliance hit. And I was very shocked at that one because I, I typically try to stay as on top of my compliance stuff when I'm posting social media stuff as possible. And that was one thing that they hit. And the other one, the, the issue was that I, one that got me absolutely nothing, I stupidly didn't change the, um, the interest generator tag from and or from or to and. So it was only searching specific things instead of a broad, so a broad audience and not just the fact that I clicked people that were looking at realtor.com and Zillow and things like that. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing to walk through, but in general, Facebook ads aren't performing at their, at their top at the moment on, um, on command, but it is a well-known issue that numerous people in, in the company are working on with Facebook to try to get them up and running properly. I've actually had issues with them even outside of command. So yeah, when you're yeah. trying to post the ad through Facebook itself. I did, I did, I did that as well. I was like, you know what, I'm done with this. Like I, when I get to my point that I'm just frustrated, I, I just go off the deep end and I was like, screw it. I'm posting this on Facebook directly. And I, while I got better results, I didn't get good yeah. results. So there's so. still issues. It's not necessarily a command thing. And yet there is an integration thing. So yeah. be patient. It will work. Um, in the meantime, um, were there any other questions here? I think we answered everything in the chat box. Did you? Franny, Franny, I definitely think your issue with the app has something to do with um, Apple. Yeah, no, I think so too. I mean, it's like when you change your Apple ID, it's it's like it does affect your old apps. And that's what's yeah. happened here, I think, you know, because it's like, I'm not able to, yeah. And it's like, now I don't know what that Apple ID was, you know, so I'm gonna have to, it's probably an Apple ID call as opposed to, Yeah. I think I'll go there first, you know? Definitely. Yeah, and also, I mean, I hate to say this, but if you have a pretty old iPhone, um, the app isn't working great. Um, you know, like if you have an iPhone from back in, I don't know, 2015. No, it's, like eight. it's not too bad, I think. It's all okay. right. Yeah, no, I, I, I've seen some people. You know what? The, the app, you know, the old app is something I hadn't touched in in a long time. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I wanted to get the new app going and learn it and start to use it. And I, you know. Yeah, it's I working pretty great. I've, I've been using it. <laughs> and and um, at least for me, it's it's pretty fast. It's pretty awesome. It's There's really no glitches with it, so. And like Jeremy mentioned, the, the uh, MLS connection is a lot better than it was eight months ago. Eight months ago, it was horrible. Like you would pull up two listings in an area where you knew that there was 30. Uh, now, I, I think it's like, honestly, I would say 95% accurate. So, yeah. 
Okay. I have a question. Hey, Nick, it, hey, Nick I got a quick question here, Tom Marvich here. Um, for, for all, I don't know, I think most of you may know that I, um, you know, being compliant, I was the one who was doing some of the checklists. And, you know, the more times people use command and the busier our office gets, there's been little boo-boos here and there. Like, for instance, one document should have been in the closing document. Um, so if you guys have questions, and, and they have been coming from the TCs where they will email me at tom at teammarvich.com, and I'll look at it. And like I say, with my compliance background, I can know what needs to be done. For instance, a new document, maybe the COVID I put in there, then I've been putting different documents. What, but what I also do in closing this here is I will contact either Tony or BRLG before I go ahead and make the, the changes. Unless, like I say, it's a document that's been elsewhere. So if I could be of any help that way, if you're doing a... Uh, a certain uh, uh, escrow and there's a document or whatever missing, just contact me and I'll get it uploaded. Perfect. Right. Thank you, Tom. I have Thanks. a question Great. with regards to um, compli <clears throat> compliance. Kelly um, huh? and the mobile app, which one triggers all the uh, analytics for your, you know, for you of uh, a client who's searching? I'm Consumer confused. App. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I look at it this way, uh, Miriam, the best way for you to, to kind of differentiate between the two, Kelly's basically a, a remote control for command. So granted, you won't be able to do everything on Kelly that you can do on command, but it's essentially if you're out of the office, yeah, it's if you're out of the office or whatever, you can make notes on a client, you can pull up a client. And the KW app is your consumer app. It's for your clients. And, and that's where if they sign up for something, if they like a listing, that's what's going to trigger it in command or in, on, you can see it on Kelly. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, I think I have it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, Kelly's kind of okay. your handheld version of command. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Any other okay. questions? All right, I think we're good. Thank you everyone Thank for you showing know. up. Um, and we will be doing this. Yes, Mary. <laughs> Did you have another question? I just want to see. I just want you to send the the thing that you have. The yeah, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send a picture of it. I, it's it's an Excel sheet, so I don't have a link for it. But I'll right. send a picture of it. This is right. with this. Uh, aside from Maria. the, how? Huh? Uh, I'll close. With, well, go ahead. Finish what you're gonna say. Okay, I was saying aside from the stages the other colorful chart, please. Aside from the stages, what now? Your, your chart, she wants your, your chart. charts that you had. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to, I'll add it as a picture in uh, okay. the Facebook group under the class that we did. That uh, and, and both guys, of them. Guys, on, on command, if you guys go to connect, we as a group will regularly be posting how-to videos whether it's from, you know, one of our trainers that, um, that does the videos at a high level, we will be posting content there that you guys can actually go and follow and basically rewatch, pause. And uh, I think these are great videos for you guys on how to use the app, how to use command, how to set up uh, opportunities. So go to connect. I will post links to videos there. You know what, yes, there is Nick, the 66 will. day challenge two, which is not bad. If there's a 66 day challenge three now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He went yeah, through it again too. because of constantly rolling out new new stages within the, the software development, but also glitches being fixed that weren't working for everyone. They've gone through again and they I think they finished it just before the end of the year. So it is pretty, pretty up to date. So I would definitely go through and just check that one back out again. Um, it could be some of the basics that you may already know, but it's never a bad idea to get a jump start and, and go back through some of that stuff again. You know what I That's found? Good. I found that it's, it's kind of good because it lets you know. Uh oh, what she's going underwater again. Hey. <laughs> but Bye, Franny. All right. <laughs> you're gonna watch it and <laughs> all right franny yeah. you keep freezing so you, you froze um, franny 
All right, we're, we're going to wrap this up, okay. guys. Thank you very much for joining. Um, we'll try and do this periodically. We're also going to be doing a command boot camp relatively soon. Um, so just keep in mind, we're going to have these crash courses. We want everyone to get on board, right? So um, thank you again, and we'll talk Bye to you everyone. soon.